Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 12th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. This weekend, Xavier wrote about a new remote access tool that was written in Python and targeting Windows. Now, of course, the problem with Windows is that it doesn't come with Python pre-installed. So the little installer script that came with this particular backdoor does just download a complete Python environment to the system. Another approach, of course, if you have seen in the past is where the Python code is just compiled into an executable. Doesn't look like uh, this approach uh, did any good for the attacker. It has a pretty good uh, virus uh, total score. So evasion didn't really work here. But then again, it's also fairly straightforward uh, code. And it looks like uh, that Mozilla's uh, public suffix list uh, did get in the middle of uh, sort of a spat between Apple and Facebook on tracking users. So first of all, what is the public suffix list? It's something that's maintained by Mozilla, but used uh, by many other uh, browsers and internet related products. And it's essentially a list of uh, domains that behave like top level domains. Technically, a top level domain is the last uh, label in a host name, but uh, there are certain top level domains uh, that uh, split it up further and that have uh, suffixes that really behave like top level domains. So for example, for .uk, the United Kingdom top level domain, we have .co, .uk, .ac, .uk that really behave like top level domains and the public suffix list does track those domains. Apple comes in here with a change they announced for iOS 14. Point five that will require applications uh, to ask users for permission if uh, they are trying to track users. Now, Apple has in uh, recent releases of iOS added more and more sort of, of these restrictions on user tracking. And this is sort of the latest expression of uh, this new policy. Also affected by this change is, of course, Facebook's application and what Facebook calls Facebook Pixel, which is sort of a simple cookie based scheme in order to track users and provide data to advertisers about ad conversion rates. And one way Facebook is addressing uh, this particular issue is also by verifying a customer's uh, domain. And in their document, they suggest that the domain verification is better, is easier if it is a top level domain plus one. So meaning it's uh, just one off from a top level domain. So you could uh, verify uh, example.com, but you could not easily verify Facebook tracking.example.com if you own example.com. But if you can manage to have example.com added to Mozilla's public suffix list, then again, you would be able to track users and to verify with Facebook the domain name Facebook tracking.example.com. The end effect was that uh, the poor folks at Mozilla were flooded with requests to have domains added to the public suffix list. And of course, this is uh, not exactly uh, what you would like to happen with this list. It has a real purpose in how cookies, for example, are restricted and does serve a number of security features. And TechCrunch is reporting that Facebook ads are actually being used to push some Clubhouse related uh, malware. Clubhouse being, of course, of the latest, uh, greatest thing when it comes sort of to, uh, I guess, social networking and online uh, chat. Uh, so no big surprise that it is uh, being used to push malware. In particular, since Clubhouse sort of created some scarcity here by not releasing an Android uh, client and also relying on users or invites in order to allow people to join Clubhouse. The advertisements appeared to advertise a PC version of Clubhouse. And of course, the goal here was to install backdoor or other malware on your system. 
And F-Secure came up with a neat little trick uh, to look for Cobalt Strike uh, DNS servers or redirectors. Cobalt Strike, if it's using a DNS for command control, will use a particular domain to accomplish that and expose that to the internet, typically via DNS redirectors. But this DNS server will not necessarily answer properly any DNS query. It's really just meant for the command control domain. If you do request any other DNS record from this particular DNS server, it will respond with the idle timeout encoded as an IP address. And by default, you would get back all zero. So 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0. So a quick little check would be to just look up a couple of common domain names like amazon.com, google.com, and some random non-existing domain. And this is essentially what this tool does. And if you get 0, 0, 0, 0 back for all of these domains, then you're dealing with a Cobalt Strike endpoint. And F-Secure is making a Scapy script available to implement this test. And then I have to apologize for a real embarrassing error that I made in Friday's podcast. I talked about the port that Google Chrome is blocking in order to avoid application layer gateways that deal with Amanda backup. It's of course 10,080, not 100,080. That would be an invalid port. Thanks to everybody who let me know about this. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.